Good evening, scrappers and casters. For today's video, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm not going to scrap just one item. I'm actually going to do two. Uh, the first thing I'm going to scrap is this uh, rice pressure cooker. I've actually done one of these before. There wasn't much in it, but this particular one, I noticed that when I flip it over, let's see if I can get to it here. When I flip it over, I don't know if you can see in there or not, there's a huge copper winding right around in here. And this thing's pretty heavy, so I think there's going to be some good copper in this. Now, I'll just leave that flipped over. So, the second item I'm going to scrap is this Sharp uh, Carousel Microwave. Uh, this particular microwave was manufactured in 1994, January 1994. This is significantly heavier than the ones that I find, you know, that are more modern. Like, you know, the ones that are like 10 years old, 12 years old. Um, this one pretty much is 27 years old. And uh, it's pretty heavy. So I know there's going to be some good copper in this one, on the transformer. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tripod set up and uh, I'm going to do the rice cooker first. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my head strap camera as well. And I'm going to get a live view. And I'm going to see if I can kind of do some overlaying on key points in the video. So we'll go ahead and get this camera set up. And we'll get the head strap camera set up. And uh, we'll bring it back. Okay, guys. Uh, got screws on the cover here. There's two on the bottom on this side. And there's none on this side here. So this should be pretty quick. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think this one's going to have a lot more copper in it than the other one. Um, at least I'm hopeful. I mean, something that's 27 years old, I mean, there probably should be more copper in it. The rule of thumb is the older the, the unit, uh, the more copper there is inside them. I don't, I don't really know when the cutoff period was when they started putting the aluminum in the transformers. Um, I'll probably have to do some homework on that and see. But uh, I'm just going to get this cover off real quick, and then I'm going to take that screw out for the... Uh, for the cord. I mean, I could realistically cut the cord, but I try to get as much of the cord as I can. So let's just wrap this right here real quick. I think it's already set to the right bit. It's not, but it works. So it's a T20 bit for this one. I'm currently using a T15, but it's still good. It well, shouldn't be too bad. So we'll leave that loose just like that. Actually, this is gonna come off easy. There's connectors here. So that's how I know this TV's pretty old, because normally they just have a piece of wire that goes through with a grounding wire. So. Pretty cool, got electric cord. So, next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do the, you know, you know what, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can get this off. There we go. Just go forward like that. Got these little lips, these things. There's a lip here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a lip. So, we'll set this aside. And uh, we're going to put it this way here so you can see everything. So this is, set this up around here. I'll put it on its side so you can see better. Uh, there might be. I don't know if you can see that or not. But here's the transformer. That's definitely copper. Honestly, it has the appearance of copper, but I think it might still be aluminum. Uh, we got our copper motor here. And then uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the last video. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to remove it or not. The other one had a simple way of removing it. There's a carousel motor under here as well. And I didn't point that out in my last video. So the motor for to spin the carousel around is directly under here. So uh, there's a lot of screws to remove this and there's really not much copper on it. So I might not take that out. But as I'm ripping this apart, I might change my mind. So I'm just going to go ahead and start removing things. Clipping wires, um, brass connectors. That's what's really difficult. Oh, just broke it right off. I'm going to put my gloves on. Uh, working with this kind of stuff, you know, I like to have gloves on. Better to be safe than sorry. So, yeah, hopefully there's not going to be too much of a boring video for you. Uh, I should have been prepared with my tools. I can always edit that stuff out. Eh, not that great, but they'll work. Oh, you know what? Never mind. Found my side cutters. So, pretty much... Uh, I'm going to try to grab these off with the brass still attached to them. I really hate taking these off, especially of like a light bulb. There's brass on the other end, but I don't like taking light bulbs apart. There's something about glass that kind of freaks me out. But I could cut them off if I really wanted to. Um, zip ties holding everything in. Cut that off. 
Yeah, let's think about these. There's a lot of zip ties in here. A lot of different types. I mean, they're made a lot differently now, so it's to be expected. Right, yeah, cut this. I could cut the wire, but and, yeah. There we go. Make it a little easier for myself. You know, just try to be as thorough as I can. Uh, Magnetron, I'm not going to touch that. So just take the connectors off. I've seen guys scrap them out, but I just don't feel comfortable doing it. Just because, you know, there is radiation when you're running this thing because of that Magnetron. So, you know, I just don't want to, uh, I don't want to risk it. I mean, I don't know if it's really safe to do it or not. And I just rather be safe than sorry. So, a couple other things here I'm going to clip off. A couple wires. Pretty much just tracing everything just to get it kind of to one place. Uh, this one, oops, sorry, just move the camera a little bit. Let me just make sure you're still in focus. Of course, you can't do it with the, with the glove on because it's a touch screen. That's the only thing I don't like about this GoPro. It's touch screen. So there is a power saving feature, so it will uh, shut the screen off to conserve battery life. So let's take a look at here. Yeah, there's a lot of connectors. That's one thing about these. You do get a little bit of brass out of them because of the connectors. And uh, this one significantly is going to have some good copper in it. That copper transformer is going to be pretty heavy. Just kind of figuring out how I should do this as I go. Yeah, but there's little stupid things that always get in your way. Uh, these clips off. Yeah, sometimes you're just better off clipping the wire and just letting that connector stay on. We're going to do that right now. So. Here we go. So things are starting to come apart now. There's a lot of switches in here. I'd probably be better off removing the wire with the switches still attached. So I'm going to try to do that. Yeah, just break them right off. That looks like it's screwed in somehow. That's the only thing I don't like about this microwave. It's pretty tall. So I can't really see over it, especially having it on the cart like this. And I want to make sure you guys get the video uh, footage. So I'm just going to cut this right off. These plastic connectors, you can get the brass out, just put them on a wire wheel and just shave one side of the plastic and then the connector will come right out. Um, if you're that anal and want to do something like that, me, I'm just trying to make this as quick as a video as possible, so I'm just going to avoid that for this time. But I usually do scrap those out. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, start ripping on things. There we go. See? Oh. Switches. They have the uh, silver contact inside, so I do keep these, and I will strip those out, and they're pretty quick to strip. You just break one side, and then everything comes apart. That's some plastic. Uh, still a rat's nest of wires here. Um, this fan, I want to get out next. It's kind of in my way, and it's got that motor there, and I want to get to the circuit board in here. So this is held on. Two screws here. Looks like it's screwed in here. So this is kind of a really difficult one to scrap out. But we'll see how quickly I can do it. So set the screw aside. I'm just gonna take this out and I'm gonna throw it right in the right in this tin shred. And I don't know if you can see or not, but right there is my other microwave that I had scrapped out before. There we go. Like I said, there is brass here. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I can always grab it later. Probably just shatter that light bulb. But I am going to take this bracket off just because I think I need to get this piece off so I can get to this under here. So, there we go. Fold it in half. Throw it right in there. Let's see. That's still attached. It's attached right over here, so we're going to do this part. This might be a complete tear down. I might actually have to completely tear this down. So I'll leave the screws there in case i got to put it back together. front door that holds the door in there's one underneath too so I'm sure if I take that apart the door will come off but I want to leave the door on because it's gonna be another thing that I throw scrap steel in so just let that screw sit there if this gets to be really difficult I'll do most of it off camera and I'll just tell you what I did so this is kind of loose I think I'm gonna have to take this brace off Sorry for the weird camera angle from my head. I'm kind of looking at it sideways. There we go. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so that's attached to the magnetron, so everything is pretty much connected to everything else. So I'll take that out. There we go. I get that bracket off. Just rip it. You know, when you put the cover back on, you don't have to put every screw in, so. There we go. Now we got it out. Uh, the screw hidden underneath the fan blade here. These are plastic, I just break it right off. And then I can get to those screws. And then once the motor's out, I just pull this plastic piece off. Which honestly, there is aluminum here, like I said in the previous video. This piece right here, this circular piece, that's uh, irony aluminum. Uh, this is steel, and then here's the copper. And these, like I said before, to get these out, there's little edges here that go all the way through on both sides. Just put it in the vise. Give it a couple taps and this will pop right off and then just strip the plastic off here and then you can just pretty much pull the copper off in one shot if you're you know if you get all the cop all the uh plastic off and get rid of the sharp edges because these wires are really thin and uh, they will get caught on any sharp edge so that's what i do with that so i don't think i'm gonna have to remove that it looks like there is aluminum in it you can tell just by looking at it there is aluminum in this um I'll turn this over Passers there. I can't really get to the wires to clip it. So uh, I'm going to pull this grounding wire connector off. There we go. Grounding wires off. I'm going to take these off, the screw off here. And that'll take the capacitor out. I'm just going to throw it back inside the loose microwave over there. But uh, I just want to give myself some room. There we go. Like I said, I think there's aluminum inside these, but I don't ever bother with them. And these connectors are really difficult to get off. There's actually a piece you have to push down, like a little tab, and then it just comes right off like that. And then we'll do the other one. And then there's one more. There we go. That's going to go right in the other microwave. So now I can actually start seeing what's going on in here. All these wires are tangled on each other. Uh, the circuit board right there. Uh, this switch right here has a spool in there with uh, silver contact. That's pretty easy to get to. Um, I might take the board off. It all depends. There is another board under here for the keypad, but it's, there's nothing on them. There's really nothing ever on those. So I don't even bother taking those off. But uh, I am going to take the, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's four screws here. I'm gonna take the transformer out. Like I said, always leave the top screw in in one of the corners. And before you start removing the last screw, just uh, loosen it up a little bit because the gravity will hold the transformer in place and make it pretty difficult to get that last screw out, especially if you're using a regular screwdriver like I'm using. If you're using a drill, uh, there won't be too much of an issue with that. So I probably See, I didn't even follow my own advice. I already took all the three out, but just hold it. Yeah, see, it's a little difficult because all that weight is on those threads. So there we go. It's actually pretty heavy. So, there might be copper in this piece right here. This is definitely copper. Uh, the weight of this is pretty heavy, actually. I'm actually gonna test that real quick. I'm gonna file right here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file the edge. That is actually copper. So, both of them are copper. So this actually has some good copper value in it. And I'll take that, uh, that apart off camera. And like I said previously, just to give you an idea, there's an edge here where it's welded all the way across on this part, usually on the bottom part where it attaches to the microwave on both sides. There's one side that's a little easier. Just look for the one that's a little easier. Get a cold chisel, put this inside a vise or on an anvil and just whack the crap out of it all the way down and it'll crack this piece right off the whole bottom piece. And then you can go ahead and start banging the banging the uh, windings out and, uh, that's pretty good copper right there so you definitely want to do that i mean you could sell it as transformer uh but i wouldn't bother i mean as easy as it is to get the copper out i'd rather just have the straight up copper so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can get oh that's screwed in everything here is screwed in so let's go ahead and just start removing screws here and see what it does this is probably for the door latch so I probably shouldn't do all of them because I want the door to latch completely. I'm gonna pan the butt. They really don't give you a lot of room on these. Yeah. There we go. I should get one of those little 
cordless battery powered screw uh, screw guns, little small ones. They're perfect for something like this where you have a tight constraint inside. Yep, of course it's screwed in elsewhere too. There's one here. I'm gonna need a shorter screwdriver. Let's see if I got one. Yep, it's a flathead. Hopefully there's a Phillips head bit here. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Yeah, I'm taking that glove off. It's so hard to work with gloves on. I'm taking these off. It's gonna make the video twice as long just trying to fight working with those gloves on. So just be careful and mindful that there are sharp edges in here. I'm sorry with the other camera angle, you can't really see what I'm doing, but that's why I have the other camera going. Okay, screws loose. Is there another one at the top? Probably. Looks like it's a little looser now. There we go. Finally got that out of there. Um, you can see there's a cheap ribbon wire. Traces of silver in here, but you need thousands of these to even get anything close to a, a good amount of silver. So I'm not going to waste my time with that. And uh, the, like I said, there's really nothing on the board on the keypad. Um, it's just a flat board and it's got these little little bubbles that you just push in and stuff Not worth my time. I'm not gonna waste my time with that. So uh, let's get this right here. Just want to take off this grounding wire and maybe get that switch out of there, too I don't think that's gonna be possible Think that's possible and there's the mechanism for the door right here this plastic piece that's what's holding it closed so i'm going to lift up on it and uh oh, actually i broke it so there's something prevent me from opening this so that's actually a good thing for right now bad thing if i want to start using it to put scrap metal in there we go let me just get this off if i have to leave one switch in there i will yeah, actually yeah, cut it off cut it right there That actually might be attached to the mechanism. There it is. So we got our switch anyways. All our wire here. Um, in order to get the carousel motor under here, I'm literally going to have to remove the whole bottom plate, all the brackets. So like, there's literally two, four, six, eight, ten screws I have to do just for a tiny motor. So I'm going to clip it right here. Put my phone on silent for a minute. There we go. I'm sorry about that, guys. Right, we got our wire assembly here uh, and our circuit board. Oh, phone is still going off and vibrating. So, yep, that's pretty much it. That's all I want from this unit. And uh, like I said, now it's a lot. It's a lot lighter now because I took that transformer out, which weighed a lot. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just put the cover back on off camera and uh, we'll start with the next uh, scrap session. Okay, guys, here's part two of the video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scrap out this um, pressure rice cooker. Uh, I've done one of these before and there really wasn't much, but as I showed you from the early part of the video, uh, there's actually a decent amount of copper in here. Um, I can see it right through these fins in here. Nice winding there. Looks pretty good. Uh, it actually looks pretty thick too. So this actually definitely looks like it's going to be worth scrapping if you find them. Or at least this particular model, which is uh, Kuchin. And uh, it's written in Korean in some places. So, But anyways, we'll go ahead and open this up and see what we got. See what this does. All right, so we got a bowl here. Feels like uh, aluminum. Oh, that is steel. So we'll, I'm not even going to bother taking this plastic off. I'm just going to throw it right in my tin steel pile. And uh, that's right there. <laughs> that's one of the microwaves from my earlier videos, and that's the other one. Uh, pretty much don't remember how to really take this apart, so I'm just going to start grabbing things. Piece of rubber. Looks like a gasket around it. I think this is steel, uh, stainless steel. Pretty sure it's stainless steel. Yep, that's stainless steel. It's got a very slight pull to it, very slightly. That's how you could usually tell stainless steel from regular steel, because regular steel, it'll just, with a rare earth magnet, neodymium magnet rather, this will actually just 
go right to it. So this is stainless steel. So pretty much, uh, yeah, I'm not really too sure what I gotta do to get this apart. There's a gasket I'll take off. Uh, and screws up in here. I don't know how this comes out. Probably gonna have to break the knob off. Yeah, I think it's attached to the knob, so I'll probably have to break that off. And there might be a hidden screw underneath here somewhere that I might have to pry up, but we'll get to that later. Um, got one Phillips here. Five Phillips screws. So let's see if this is long enough, which it is. I hate these long channels because you can barely grab onto it. Okay, I'll try this one first. Hold my cart together. Let's see. Sorry, this is the boring part of the video, but once I upgrade my software, I'll be doing a time lapse on most of this stuff. So, this way here, you don't have to see this boring part. Worst screws ever. Came and grab onto it. There it is. So, get that off. I guess just move around until it grabs. I'm going to do this off camera. I'll be back. Okay, guys. Remember when I said I couldn't get access to that carousel motor? Well, after putting the cover back on, I was looking at the bottom of it, and I noticed it was just only held in by these two screws, and this flipped over. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take that out, get these brass connectors off, that little bit of extra wire. But that you can see how much I really didn't leave. I didn't really leave much on this thing. I mean, I cut the wires as far as I could, and pretty much... That's a tiny motor. There's really not much copper in it, but I'm just going to remove it anyways just because it's easy to get to. So I'll bring it back for the final weigh-in. Um, I can already tell you right now we got almost double the amount of copper from this microwave versus that one. So pretty much uh, the difference in years was that one is nine years newer, and this one's nine years older. So anyways, I'll get that out, and uh, we'll do the final wrap-up of uh, how much weight we got. Okay, guys, I'm back. I got all five screws removed, so we'll pull this off and see what we got. Holy crap. Look at all that copper. Uh, it's not as thick as I thought. It's just one layer, but that might might be equal to something. I mean, wow, look at that aluminum aluminum heat sink right there, extruded aluminum. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and start ripping stuff off first. All right, there's the motor for the fan. This is plastic here. Just grab this out of here. Oh, I'm going to cut it. It has it wrapped around these stupid things, so we'll just cut it out of the way. I'm gonna get these tabs. There we go. Should wear gloves, but whatever. Now it's gonna be a pain in the butt, so I'm gonna clip it right here. And this usually I just toss in my toss in my tin shred. There's a tiny bit of copper in here, but I'm not gonna break that open. So throw that right into tin shred. And we got our cord here. You know what I like to do? I like to strip these right as I get them. So we'll cut that off. We'll grab the plug. There we go. Broke right off. Easy. Now there is still a piece of brass and copper in there. A tiny bit because it broke off. So we'll throw this in tin shred also. You can actually see a little piece of brass there. And there's a little bit of copper from this wire edge here all the way up to here. So that's why I throw it in tin shred because one, there is a valuable metal in there. So. Get rid of the plastic. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot of goodies in this. I was very surprised. The first one I ever did, there was not a lot of goodies in, but this one definitely has a lot of goodies. So uh, start trying to remove these things. Just try to remove wires wherever you can. Uh, these are going to be a pain in the butt. So just get that out of the way. You know, honestly, I could just start clipping wires because I don't think there's really much in here. This is just a lock mechanism. Uh, nope, that's the hinge. My bad. This pulls right out. That's good. A lot better. So let's just tear it down completely and see how this is set up. Yeah, that's what most of my videos are the complete tear downs. All right. And we're just going to break this. There we go. Yep, just a spring for the lid. And looks like there's wire attached to here. So I'm just going to start pulling the connectors apart. There we go. Just don't want to have all these pieces connected. We got zip ties there. Break that right off. What is it attached to? There we go. Right to there, so we'll just clip it right off. You don't need every tiny millimeter of wire. There we go. This is more of a hack and slash right there. 
this is a pain in the butt. Let's get that off of there. Uh, let's remove the screws and see what that does for us. So, three Phillips here. One. See, I'm trying to rush. I'm on my lunch break, so I'm kind of limited on my time. All right, take those pieces of plastic off. The wires fed through. That's the most nuisance thing, having these stupid things to feed the wires around. You know? I got some more plastic for the uh, recycling bin. Alright, so that's out of the picture. This is attached here, which I'm going to cut this right here. I might not save the connector. I mean, you could take these apart. Um, it's actually pretty easy to scrap those. There's a brass connector in there. Uh, the way to do it is just take take it in a pair of channel locks and just go along the edge with a grinding wheel. Um, and it'll, you can just pull it apart and separate it. And then you can get the uh, brass out of there if you're really anal about that. So, but this has got some nice copper in it. I like this kind of copper. This is the kind of copper you would see in uh, a television yoke. So, just rip some of that tape off because I want to get this first. Oh, there we go. It's actually pretty easy. And it's attached to that piece there. So, let's see how we can get that off. Perfect. That's, that was pretty easy, actually. So, let's just go ahead and rip the tape, get it clean. Some of the rubber, they put a little bit of rubber here to hold the uh, hold it down in some spots, just like in a television. So I can get most of that off. I mean, I can always burn it off in the furnace if I have to. But I kind of like to keep my copper as clean as I can. So there we go. Get the tape off. That section is all right. So this one we got to get the tape off. Looks like surgical tape. It actually feels like it too. Get off my fingers. Okay. So that is pretty much, well, with the exception of this little rubber, we'll get the big chunks off. That's pretty much as clean as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to set that aside. See this, uh, I don't know how the heck this is attached. Looks like a little button here. Does that come off? Does if you push it that way. So here we go. Spring, that's steel. This, I have no idea what it's attached to. Um, this is aluminum, little tiny piece. I just want to see what the wire's attached to, anything electronic. So just bend the tabs up real quick, and then you can get that off. Like I said, if I've never scrapped something before, something a little different, yeah, see, it's just an aluminum cap with a little gasket inside it. That's aluminum. This right here, it has some... There it is. That's all it was. So we're just going to cut that off. That's just plastic anyways. This is junk. Usually on the wire. You know what? I'm not going to strip this. Low grade wire. So we're not even going to take that connector off. It's not worth it. Most of this is low grade wire to me. Not worth stripping. Stripping rather. So I just usually leave the connectors on. It doesn't matter in my scrapyard. They still pay the same price with the connectors on or off. So that's why I leave them on. Because it's the extra weight. I mean there's a little bit of brass in some of those like really tiny pieces but it's not worth trying to get to so now we're gonna go ahead and see what to do here I don't know how I'm gonna get this cover this assembly apart because I suspect that this might be die cast uh, let's grab the magnet let's see die cast yep die cast <clears throat> so uh, I might do that off camera just destroy it Let's see how to get that apart. There's more plastic I can throw and recycle. More plastic I can get rid of. Nope, let's get a zip tie. This wire I might strip because it looks like it's a little thick. Yeah, that's a lot thicker. That's part of the power cord. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. It's a small section, but it's easier to run through the uh, the stripping machine because once I get the gauge set, I just go through all my wire and I see, you know, what the similar size wire is and I just run it through. So I'll cut a connector off here on that one just because. It's annoying me. So, this, another connector here. So, well, let's just get this out of the picture for right now. So, this is the kind of stuff I want to concentrate on. So, this right here, plastic, little layer of wire around it, I think. It's either wire or a gasket, I'm not sure. This is aluminum, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, it's not really worth my time. I'll just take the part off that came off easily. And this, this plastic recycle. I can't tell if this is wire or if this is actually 
the gasket. Yep, that is wire. So that'll go in the low grade wire as well. Let's cut it off here to get it easy, easier. Oh, I wanted to mention these fans here, they're not worth scrapping out. A, I'll show you why. I mean, just break these off. These you find in computer fans, or these are computer fans, so to speak, in a power supply or uh, a secondary fan that's added to a CPU on the motherboard or any kind of like, you know, chip that gets hot. I just snap these off. And I'm going to show you what's inside it just so you can see that it's really not worth strip, stripping out, rather. So. Yeah, you can see how much of a pain in the butt this is. Take my broken screwdriver. Try to pry that out of there. Does not want to come out. So I'm just going to break it. Just a little circuit. Well, it's not worth anything. Well, it's worth 15 cents a pound, but there's really nothing. But I can't even get this out. It's such a pain in the butt. But uh, you can see there's very tiny, tiny pieces of copper wire in there. I mean, this is not a lot. This is probably enough to make a gram. So these are not worth stripping. So throw them in your electric motors bin and then just get the weight off of that. This plastic, done. Recycle. Let's see what else we got here. This piece, that's plastic. I'm gonna leave that on unless it's attached to some other piece of metal that I gotta get off. But uh, let's see, how are we gonna get this? It looks like right here it's on a bracket. So we'll get this. Get this circuit board off. These circuit boards, you know, that's a nice piece of extruded aluminum right here. Extruded aluminum is pretty much aluminum stock that's pushed through a mold with severe, severe pressure, and I believe it's heated too when they do it. Um, it's obviously not in a molten form, it's in a solid form, but I think it is heated up and then they, uh, you know, they pretty much just uh, push it through the mold, and that's how you get that extrusion, like all these fine lines, and it looks like this. This is the highest grade of aluminum that you can get. Um, besides, I think like aircraft aluminum, which that might even be the same type of stuff, but you know, anyways, uh, that's easy to take off. Usually, I'm not going to worry about it now. I just want to get this plastic off. So, let's see if we can get these circuit boards out of here. These are easy to break apart. I'll show you how to do one of those on camera. Let's see, do we have another one holding in? Oh, that's easy. And this, I'm just going to clip the wires, make this a strip down board. off these are brass but I'm not gonna worry about that it's just too tiny and it's too much of a hassle to get to it so actually I'll show you real quick how I break these so I snip it off the board here there's usually two some of them there's four some of them there's eight that hold it to the board it all depends on how big it is so let's get that off real quick get in there and snip that there you go that's a low grade board now it was a low grade power board originally because it had this, but that's just straight up low grade board. So what I do to break these open, this is iron ferrite. Very easy to snap apart. Just get a pair of channel locks, stick it in there like that. Just crank down on it until it breaks in half. There it goes. Now it's broken in half. It'll be a little difficult. I gotta break it in a couple more sections. Let's see. Oh god, I gotta get some real tools. I'm sick of these Chinese fucking pliers excuse my language i don't usually say the f word on on camera but chinese stuff really annoys the crap out of me so so once you break it it's, it's really tightly wound but once you get it apart you can just do it like this get the pieces of iron out and then once you get it started you can kind of really pull it apart just get that piece out when i first started scrapping i used to unwind these and it would take about 10 minutes so now it's literally about a minute to scrap them out, but there's some wire, uh, copper wire right there. Let's just make sure, which I know what it is, but yep, it is. You can see the uh, coppery color right there, so we'll just set that aside. And then I'll do this one off camera, you know, to see it, but I just wanted to show you an example of how to scrap those pretty quickly. So let's get all this out of here, start clipping wires. Leave the connector on the board, just if it's easy to get it off the wire that is. I'm just going to start clipping them off. Let's see. This, this, the crystal display, these are little dip switches underneath, or toggle switches. Yep, that's what they are. I think there's something in those, but I just, I don't even bother. I just take the board off and then throw it on low-grade boards. There's really nothing else of value on here. So, 
get that out of there. Are there any hidden screws? No, there are not. And there's got some ribbon cable here, which I'm going to cut off. Because that is low grade wire, and that's worth more than this uh, circuit board as is. So I'll just get as much as I can. There we go. Clip this off. Another low grade board. Looks like there's a speaker in here. Not going to waste my time. There's a very thin layer of copper in there and they're hard to strip out. So, not going to bother. Just going to take the wire that's easy to get. Got rid of that. And let's see, how is this attached? Does not look like there's any screws holding it in. From what I can tell, so it looks like it's just these tabs. Oh, I hope. Looks like I'm breaking the board a little bit. No, well, maybe not. Let's get my little flat blade in there. I broke this flat blade the other night. There we go. I just broke the tab off. Wear eye protection when you do this, especially if you're going to break tabs off. So, uh, there's two screws holding this aluminum heat sink on. So, this is actually easy to take apart, unless there's posts that it's attached to, which there are right here. But you, once you get this loose, you can actually clip those off. Sometimes they're made out of aluminum, too, so I just leave them attached, depending upon if they are or not. Most ca cases, they're made out of steel. There we go. Yep, actually that was easy. So that's just silicone grease. I'll just wipe that later on. But nice piece of extruded aluminum that was easy to take off. So these uh, have iron and copper mixed in with them, but they're just too much of a nuisance to clean up. So I just leave them on the board. Uh, this I will take off eventually, uh, probably after the video. But and then this wire, I'll just clip this real quick. Or maybe I'll take that off too, and then just call it done. There you go. Now this one, I might be able to get the cutters in there. They tend to put them in the most awkward places. Like every time, it's usually the most awkward place. So that was easy to take out. I'll set that aside and strip that off camera. So there's three of these total. Three of those, and then that's the other one. So this board is pretty much stripped down of everything that I want off of it. So now this is a low-grade board. Uh, we got some plastic here that... I don't need a couple screws that I don't want because, you know, they're just screws and it's not worth me taking my time to take it apart. There's a speaker here that I don't really want. Just throw that in junk. And then, uh, yeah, let's just take a quick look at this cover, see if we can get something apart on this. Uh, I really don't know how. Oh, this piece of plastic. I don't see any screws holding this in, but let's see what this rubber gasket does. I really have no idea how this is together. This might peel off. I think this peels off. There might be tabs that hold, holds it in. So uh, let me see if I can get this apart off camera and we'll bring it back and show you what's underneath it. Okay guys, fast forward to the next day. Uh, I got everything apart from that microwave. Uh, I've got everything here that I was going to weigh up. Uh, here's all the copper right here. That was from the transformer. That was the big heavy copper coil and this was the thicker wire that I thought originally was aluminum wire but it is actually copper um, and then this was from the uh, the motor uh, that was easy to take apart and then uh, this was from the carousel uh, motor underneath um, here's the motor assembly right here a couple small plastic pieces too but pretty much I had to pry the cover off pull the gears out pry this off and then this I had to roll back in order to get it apart and this is pretty much all I got and uh, I'm actually going to weigh that up first uh, let me just dump this here set this up I don't know if you can see that or not but we're at zero grams so this was from the carousel motor seven grams I mean that's about the weight of uh, two copper pennies so I mean was it worth my five minutes of taking it apart probably not so that's why I normally skip those but uh, here's the brass connectors off of the whole microwave, and then there was a piece inside uh, that was brass. These two little pieces are actually brass. So we got uh, almost an ounce. We got 28.7 grams. All right, get that out of there. This is from the transformer, but I'm just going to weigh all the copper together. So a little piece from the plug that was had some of the wire still attached, and then the power cord. Uh, that's what this is wrapped around here. That's the power cord wire. So here's what we got for copper from this 1994 microwave. We got 753 grams and that equates to 
26.6 ounces, 0.75 kilos, and the grand total actually is one pound, 10.6 ounces. So uh, yeah, you can see why the older microwaves are definitely worth stripping for copper because that's definitely about five bucks worth. Uh, this right here is all the plastic and uh, tape and adhesive and everything from the uh, from this coil and then from this one here. That's why I actually unraveled this. It was easy to unravel. And I wanted to clean up as much of that crap as possible from this wire because this is coated in lacquer. And uh, you know, it just makes for a really, uh, you know, hazardous melt because I don't really know what it's made of inside there. And I'm sure burning it off is probably not, you know, the greatest thing to do, but you know, sometimes you, you have to. And then this one was covered in this stuff also. And I just wanted to show you real quick how I usually clean this up. I don't have my vise here, but I'll just give you an example. When you have this real thick lacquer here and you get this out in this form, you can take a chisel and just put it in the vise, take a chisel and go down the edge and just bang it lightly with a hammer and you'll end up scraping most of this crap off. Um, at least this way here, you know, there won't be as much uh, impurities inside the crucible when you try to pour the copper. Um, you can always use the borax to, uh, you know, get the impurities to one place and then, you know, scoop it off with a ladle, which is normally what I do. Uh, but, I mean, it just makes, you know, if you, the more you clean it, the better off you are. So, anyways, uh, that concludes uh, scrapping that microwave. And I'm going to go ahead and start off on that rice maker in the next portion of the video. Okay, guys, I got that cover piece off. There was uh, one of the knobs unscrewed, and then uh, there was tabs all the way around like I thought. So uh, here's pretty much what's inside this. Uh, looks like There's definitely a heating element in there. Um, we know those are steel. So if we could just get this apart real quick. Oh, dropped my soda bottle. Yeah, probably should have just took all the screws out before I started recording. But, you know, I'm trying to make it as legitimate as possible so people see how long it really does take to scrap something out. So they can make the decision themselves if they want to attempt it or not. You know, like I said, it's all based upon what your time is worth to you. So, you know, an hour lunch break to do a video like this is it's worth it for me. So, you know, I don't got much going on on lunch break and I figured I could do a YouTube video and let the rest of the world know what's in these. So let's see what we can do here. Looks like they fed this wire through, so I'm just gonna pull it off, just like that. Pull this off. These stupid connectors. There we go, get rid of them. Let's pull it out. Okay, so this comes off. More stupid connectors. There we go, There's some plastic and screws, there's the plastic. Like I said, most electronic devices have a lot of plastic on them. Uh, there's probably copper in here. It looks like this might do something. I don't know. Actually, I have no idea what's in here. There's definitely a, a copper motor of some sorts because, or electric motor because it's got the wires attached. So there's two screws right there. Yeah, I'm not going to bother taking this apart right now. We'll just set that aside and see what it is later. So we got our heating element here. all the screws holding it together the heating element we know is steel so honestly and we know the rest of it is die cast aluminum so what you can do is they do have a uh, a grade called irony aluminum so you can throw that in the irony, irony aluminum pile I think it's like 30% of what clean aluminum would go for so that's it right there Let's see if we get those wires off Maybe it doesn't have a heating element. Okay. This does not have a heating element. All right. I guess it was just done by the wires. And then maybe, uh, maybe this. I have no idea. But just take these off. And then this is considered clean aluminum. Well, dirty aluminum. But it is kind of considered clean. When you melt it down in a crucible and you s skim all the slag off and pour it into a bar, it's clean afterwards. So this I probably won't scrap out. There we go. That aluminum. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this might be. Let's see what this is. That came right off. Let's just test it and see what it is. And where's my magnet? So my magnet's missing. So we're gonna have to grab another one right here. Okay. Stainless steel. 
It's got a slight pull to it. That's stainless steel. So I'll throw all that with the stainless steel. So let me get everything cleaned up and uh, we'll weigh everything. We'll st strip down these two pieces here. Um, like I said, that's pretty much it. And we'll strip down some of the wire, like the power cord we're definitely going to strip down. This stuff here I'm probably not going to strip. Like I said, it's uh, pretty thin. Uh, it's got a couple different layers on it too. So I'm just going to throw this in uh, low grade wire. I mean, if I do see any brass plugs that are uh, exposed brass, then I'll cut those off like I normally do on the microwaves. But I'm not really seeing any here. They're all protected under these little plugs here. They got brass pins inside there. So we'll just throw that in low grade wire. So, okay, guys, I'll bring it right back. Okay, guys, it's scored all the way down. I just want to show you how I strip these power cables real quick. Uh, try this one right here. Go it around, pull the connector off. There we go, we've got our end. It's already scored down the middle. Just twist it around because this is uh, braided wire. So once you find the channel, I mean, the machine might need to be adjusted because some of these are frayed a little bit. But if you really grab onto it, like really close, it won't pull. It won't leave much of the wire inside there. So it is a little tiny piece right there, but that's about it. So we'll throw that in the recycle. But here's the copper from half that half that power cable. So we'll do a, another one from start to finish. Okay, guys. One other thing I wanted to show you is um, when you're working on a cart like this and you got a lot of mixture of plastic and steel and other things, if you want to quickly grab all the steel, just get yourself one of these cheap retrie retrieving magnets. I got this at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that. Um, what I didn't like about it is it's hollow in the middle. So I put some tape, some like heavy duty, they call it like glass tape, I think. Put some heavy duty tape around the whole thing and then uh, when you just use the retrieving mat you can pick everything up usually in one shot just like this there might be some things that are like stainless steel that don't really attract to it too well but you know it really grabs everything and uh, let's let me put a glove on real quick and uh you know if you want to just clean up your steel and stuff just slide it right off just like that so and that's why i uh put the tape on it just to easily just clear it right off so now I'm comfortable that there's really no, no other metal on here. I did a spot check. There's no aluminum. This might be, eh, it's like stainless steel, but I'm going to throw it in steel. I don't care. But uh, there's no other metal on here, so I can just scoop this up with my dustpan and get this clean, and then we'll do our weigh-in. Okay, guys. Cart's all cleaned off of all the crap that was on it, and now we're going to do the final weigh-in. Uh, I am going to weigh the boards just to show you that I get about 15 cents a pound for these. So between... Both items that I scrapped out, the microwave and the uh, rice cooker, it's 12.3 grams, so that's about uh, 11, 12 cents for the circuit boards. Uh, stainless steel, that was from the rice, rice cooker, 3.2 ounces. Aluminum, this is just from the rice cooker, except for that piece. That was from the microwave, we'll just leave that on there. Uh, one pound, 7.2 ounces. And then the copper, just from the pressure cooker this is from the uh, the cord we got 12.7 uh, 12.5 ounces and then we're gonna add in the copper from the microwave and we want to see how much copper we got for this total video so oh I forgot a circuit board over here oh well whatever we got two pounds 6.8 ounces so yeah that's not that bad I'd say probably about an hour's work uh, Probably two hours if you count all the uh, the takes that I had to do in between video clips and stuff that I did off camera. So maybe two hours with all the uh, the errors that I made and had to redo the clips all over again. I probably get about a 50% uh, rating uh, accuracy when it comes to uh, doing these clips. I might say something stupid and then, you know, I'll have to do it all over again. So anyways, uh, yeah, so that concludes the scrap session. There is not going to be a melt at the end of this one. Uh, we'll just do that for the next video. I think what I'm going to start doing from now on is I'm going to do a, a scrap session on one day and then the next video is going to be a casting session. Uh, just kind of to split the channel up 50-50. So, anyways, thank you very much for viewing and uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification and you'll be alerted when future videos are posted. Thank you very much for watching and happy scrapping.